So you might have taught yourself some Python, R, SQL, and some data analysis skills, but you still find it difficult to land an interview and get your first data analyst job. And you're really looking to make a career transition from a non-technical background to a data science career. Then this video is for you. Hi everyone, hope you're well and welcome back. One of the questions that I usually get asked is how to get the first data analyst job with no prior experience or related qualifications. So in this video, I want to share with you the strategy that has helped me get my first data analyst job with a background in economics. So both my bachelor and my master study are in economics. I had no official working experience as a data analyst or coding experience, just some very basic self-taught coding skill. So with this video, I hope Hope to help you do the same. The number one strategy is to aim at smaller companies when you're applying for a new job. The smaller and less known, the better. The reason is, if you were to apply to a very big name, you're gonna have to compete with a lot of candidates who probably have slightly better edges, better qualifications, or more experience than you. We're gonna have to compete with hundreds of candidates whose profiles might look slightly better than yours for whatever reason. Let's say there are 100 candidates, then you would have only 1% chance of getting the job. We've all heard of the growing demand for the data analyst and data science jobs, but in fact, the supply is growing a lot as well. So unless you believe that you are better than most candidates or have a very unique selling point to stand out, most of us will have to strategize a little bit. Suppose instead that you apply for a very small company, let's say a new startup with maybe 10 employees. In this case, not a lot of people might know about this startup or even care enough to apply for it. This is your opportunity. Instead of competing with hundreds of smart candidates, now you only compete with maybe 10 or 20 of them. Your chance of getting the job is significantly higher. It literally increases from 1% to 10% without you doing anything. It's not to say that we don't care about other factors like salaries, benefits, and the industry that the business is in, whether their business is something you're interested in. I'm just saying if everything is roughly equal, then size does matter to your chance of getting the job. This is also exactly what I did when I applied for my first data analyst job. I just finished a four month research internship after my master degree and I applied for a junior data analyst job at a very small startup in Amsterdam. I asked my thesis supervisor to write me a reference letter and after two interviews, I got the job. Everything happened in just two or three weeks before I signed the contract and have my first day at work the week after. This strategy doesn't mean that you are hurting your career by starting out small or not starting out at your dream company or a big corporation right away. We tend to think of our career transition to be a straight line, but this is often not what happens in reality because sometimes you're gonna have to make a few baby steps in roughly right direction to reach your goal and to make the transition happen. In my case, I worked for that startup for one year and three months, learned everything I could learn, did everything I could do to contribute. Then one day I decided that I want more challenges and a headhunter contacted me and asked me if I want to apply for a position at PwC. They are growing their data science team and needed more people with my experience. Then I got a job this time much easier. Not only that the company is more prestigious, I also got a 150% increase in my salary from my previous job. Though I truly believe that you'd have better chance to succeed and get into the field if you started at a small company and then after one or two years, um, once you have built your experience and foundation, then you can try to move to a bigger company and negotiate your salary and to make a, the best out of your career move. Moving to the second point about certificates and credentials. In the past few months, there's been a lot of hype around this uh, Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate, which promise to help you learn the in-demand skills that will have you job ready in less than six months, no degree or experience required. Even though I believe this is a great program, it's from Google after all, and it will teach you the concept and the skills that you're going to need in your job. But I don't think this is enough to get you a data analyst job. 
Remember the supply and demand concept. If many people are getting these certificates because it's so popular, then it's not gonna help you differentiate yourself anymore. When a recruiter looks at your resume and they see a bunch of credentials but no practical experience associated with any business or organization, they're gonna get an impression that you're just collecting credentials rather than possessing the actual skills. The approach I would take if I were you is to find opportunities like volunteer projects at an organization or a short internship or a hackathon that you can sign up for free. If you include these kinds of experience in your resume, it weighs more than any online certificate in my opinion. They are your unique experience and it shows that you are proactively developing your skills, you are proactively applying your skills to solve a real world problem. It also gives you something to talk about during your interview, um, especially when you have no prior experience to talk about. Your interviewers may be curious about one of the things that you put in your resume and ask you, oh, you've been at this uh, hackathon and uh, how did it go and uh, what did you do there? Or you did this project with this and this organization or company, which happened to be one of the clients at the company you were applying for. By this way, you can start having a fun conversation with your interviewers instead of just an interview. It will give you a better chance of getting the next interview and eventually the job offer. The third tip I want to share is to utilize your personal network. A lot of my colleagues uh, got their first job or the first internship at my company through their informal network. One of my colleagues had a BBQ with the neighbors at a local event, I guess. One of his neighbors happened to be a partner of BPC. So he got the direct reference from this partner and did the interview and got the job. Another friend of mine walked the dog for her neighbor because he got she got nothing to do in her free time. And one day by coincidence, she came across the LinkedIn profile of that neighbor and found out that he was the HR manager of the company she was applying for. Or in my case, I got my research internship and my first data analyst job through my thesis supervisor at University because he turned out to be one of the advisors for that healthcare startup that I was applying for. So all you need to do is to get to know people around you. Talk to them and ask for their help if you see an opportunity. I've been to a lot of formal networking events, but honestly, they don't usually help much, at least from my experience. If you think about it, it makes sense because there's so little time to actually get to know someone at an event in just one or two hours. And and it's normal that they wouldn't be excited to refer to you for a job. So I think overall, informal network is still more helpful. A bonus tip, but also a very important tip I want to share with you is to pay attention to the needs of the company you're applying for. Firstly, you want to read really carefully the job description and identify the keywords, like the skills and the domain knowledge they are looking for in a candidate. Data analyst jobs are really industry specific. Having the domain knowledge Knowledge is really important when analyzing data. Being a data analyst in a healthcare industry is very different from being a data analyst for airlines or marketing agencies. You might also get to use different kinds of analysis software or programming languages and tools. Be sure to incorporate them as much as possible in your resume or at least get to know those tools. Regarding the domain knowledge, I would encourage you to get to know the industry and read the news and get updated about the business industry you're applying for. It's going to help you tremendously in the interview, but also in your future job if you get it. It's very rewarding and valuable to have a data analyst experience because it opens the door to so many different exciting career paths, which I will talk about in my next video. It also gives you the chance to work on really interesting problems, creating impact and developing really important technical skills for your Yourself. So I hope this video will help you land your first data analyst job easier and faster. And let me know in the comment box down below who you are, where you're from, what's your background and what you're looking for. And I'm so excited to get to know you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.